Os. Hej. Ready? Hi. Ready? Yo. Yo. Kata. Thank you, Coach Alan. Ish. Hi, sir. Me. Sun. Chi. Ho. Ik. Sit. Ich. Ni. Ich. Ni. Ich. Hurry. Hi, sir. Ich. Ni. Ich. Ni. Hi, sir. Zashi. Hesu grashi. Os. Yoi. Hesu grashi. Os. Hai. So Lovely. that was really cool. Um, I, no, that was really cool. So we're watching this studio. Um, but yeah, um, if you're joining us right now, we are just getting our second segment for this morning started. Mm -hmm. As we mentioned before the break, we are joined by the host of Shotokan, and uh, we are going to be talking a little bit about uh, some of the benefits of karate, um, especially for kids. And joining us in our studio, we have uh, Shehan Raymond Kelly. Good morning. Good morning to you. Morning. Awesome. Good morning. So tell us a little bit about your school. And um, I would be also believe that the host of Shotokan is, um, I thought I saw it in, in Kayo and in Belmopan at, at one point, yes? Um, yes. The house of Shotokan, we're only in Belize City. No. That's where we're at. Okay. However, there are other martial arts studios that is mm -hmm. with, within the country. Okay. But house of Shotokan is only one of a kind, okay. one of a type. So we've got to take that pride. <laughs> on. Okay. Um, although the affiliate school, I know those instructors personally. Mm -hmm. We have an outstanding relationship with them. Okay. Um, the house of Shotokan, we have been in uh, uh, right there at uh, Coney Drive by mm -hmm. the roundabout for approximately 10 years, going on 11 years. Believe it or not, that's wow. how long we've been there. Um, we have worked uh, a lot tremendously with many of the children mm -hmm. uh, who have now become young adults, professionals, mm -hmm. uh, believe it or not, owners of their own companies, and on and on the, the, the success story goes. Mm -hmm. And we're just so, you know, we're just so uh, uh, encouraged and, and, and excited to have been a part of their journey in life. Mm -hmm. uh, the two youngsters that you see that did the um, exhibition earlier, um, uh, one has been in karate for nine years. Mm -hmm. wow. So we got him when he was real he small. Was and we have another one, that the youngest one, been in karate for three years. Mm -hmm. And again, we had, uh, he enrolled when he was very young also, his parents enrolled him in. Um, there's different reasons why the children involved are getting enrolled in karate. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons I would like to, you know, uh, endorse our school at, mm -hmm. uh, of saying is that we help them to develop discipline and definitely shoot beyond the stars in life. Mm -hmm. um, many success stories have come out of our school, from competition. Uh, me, myself, I am a world champion. I do not highlight that, but mm -hmm. um, I do have a PhD uh, on the academic side and, and on and on the story goes, but that's not what I'm about. I'm about to impart that information to the students uh, or those children in Belize mm -hmm. that want to further and become successful in life mm -hmm. that's the basis of our school and 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 how early do people start uh, uh we have a pre-kinder program okay. two years wow old. two years old <laughs> well you you'll be surprised uh those two years old you know in childhood development yeah. um they i mean they are the curriculum that we design for them is somewhat uh, enroll uh, associated with educational because myself being an educator have a licensed degree in education and we're able to formulate the karate skills 
to that age level and you'll be surprised. No, they're not doing the high punches or the kicking or the things that these guys that you saw earlier did, mm -hmm. but just for them to have the balance mm -hmm. and to listen to commands and to be able to distinguish the right and the left and the, and mm -hmm. the different kicks. Again, it's modified to that age grade, uh, age range, to the various age range in schools. Mm -hmm. and, and, and speaking of the curriculum, you know, um, I guess for some people who don't really understand martial arts and karate, can you talk a little bit about what it is uh, that you know you that that you're learning? Because some people think uh, karate they automatically think you know just fighting, yeah. or or yeah. you know. So what 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 is really learning martial arts all about? I'm going to burst. No, no, I great. <laughs> I, I'm going to burst your bubbles and and educate the public. And I, I I thank you for affording me the opportunity. Karate is not fighting. Yeah. As most people initially think, I'm going to go learn mm -hmm. how to kick and then go out there and club or someone yeah. beat people up or bully mm -hmm. other children who, um, it, it is totally away from that. It is one's own personal development. Mm. And the using the karate skills to develop those children, going back, the foundation, discipline, going back, honor, respect courtesy those those uh, characteristic traits or principles that have been lost in our society to reintegrate and to reteach those li little ones from when they're young coming up using the martial arts skills is a holistic development mm -hmm. of that child mm -hmm. so during the process, yes, they do learn the punches, they do learn the kicks, because those are things that adds to their development. Mm -hmm. However, karate ni senti na shi, it's a Japanese terminology, karate never give the first strike nor the first blow. Mm -hmm. The concept is that karate is like the tourniquet. You have a laceration, you put the tourniquet on, has a last, last resort. So karate is used as a last resort, to protect one's life, mm -hmm. to protect oneself, and it's never used in a manner of bullying someone or say, I can, I can clobber you, mm -hmm. I can do this to you. No. Karate is you walk away. Mm -hmm. Although you have the skill set that you know you can take a person's life, because you can, you have the skill set to do it, you walk away. Mm -hmm. But when your life is threatened or other, life is th other individual's life is threatened, then you engage and then you apply the skills in preservation of life or even property. How does a, a student begin from the first stages all the way to uh, possibly uh, getting their black belt? There is a elevation level in karate, mm -hmm. i.e. through the ranks or through the belts. Mm -hmm. Just like in the, in the school setting, you have preschool and kinder and first grade. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone start out at a white belt. The white belt signifies emptiness, that they're empty. They have no knowledge. They have no idea. They come to you as a, as a glass without water. Mm -hmm. And with time, then slowly drops of water is put into that glass, and it goes up and fill that glass eventually. Mm -hmm. So different karate schools use different belts, different system. But within House of Shotokan, we use the belts from white belt to white black to yellow belt, yellow black, has a way of knowledge associated with the ranks mm -hmm. and an encouragement for the students to move to the next belt mm -hmm. and eventually to move to their black belt. Mm -hmm. Now, black belt is not the final stop. At the black belt, it would be at a university level, possibly getting your master's degree, but that's not the last stop. You still got your PhD and other research that you can do mm -hmm. that you continue to further on. So at the black belt level, then that's where your, I'll just use it as an example, that's where your stripes comes in. Mm -hmm. You know, your first degree, second degree, and with years, those come with years, by the way. <laughs> you know, <laughs> with years go on, then you turn into a mature master that have the complete knowledge, and then you're able to teach it as I am doing here. So I, I would imagine that the, the host of Shotokan, as well as other um, karate schools, um, had suffered a little bit of a severe loss during the, the pandemic because yes. you were not able to have that one-on-one -on -one interaction. That is correct. Um, how were you able to, to, um, to facilitate your students and um, how are you trying to get back your students? 
You know, COVID-19 affect, as we know, mm -hmm. the world in a very drastic manner. Mm -hmm. um, loss of life and sad to say, you know, I know I've lost individuals mm -hmm. close to me that and in the martial art world. Um, the, the little ones, what we did during that time period, we went online. Mm -hmm. And uh, through online, we were able to engage the, the students through continuing the program with them. Online learning. Um, I think in the academic setting, at your master level, that level, you're doing more in the online. It's not merely the classroom setting. Your bachelor's degree, you're doing the But when the COVID hit, we went online and then we started, believe it or not, a total different curriculum mm -hmm. online. I've never thought about doing karate online, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so I improvise and through that, we were able to maintain some of the students. Mm -hmm. And we continue all the way through. Um, once the SI start lifting and COVID kind of start, I won't say dying down, it's still here alive and well. Uh, once that started coming back, what we had to do is to now reach out into the student and start talking to the parents, encouraging them to, to return back. Mm -hmm. The ones who are coming back, the parents are sharing with me, Shihan, you know, uh, my little one have been at home, they're overweight, um, and we would like to have an exercise program with them. Um, the karate have helped them, uh, their self-esteem is down, they're doing online schooling, online programming, so subsequently what has happened there, some have become disinterested because online is not for everyone, online learning. They have become disinterested, and now I have to now engage and excite them back to want to do not only karate mm -hmm. but also their education their schooling mm -hmm. so through the training i now do the exercise with them mm -hmm. addressing the weight issues and then go back and start doing the karate and start increasing the command and the discipline and mm -hmm. really get them re-engaged back in so many of the parents are saying discipline uh, not not so much uh, as far as the respect because during COVID they were home with their parents. Mm -hmm. So either they listened to their parents or you know what happened, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so um, the word that is coming is that, and um, I'm encouraged to see many of the parents are responding back. They're bringing their little ones in. I believe this week or yesterday was the first day that many of the schools are open to bring all mm -hmm. the students in. So now the parents are starting to say it's okay to start bring my child out into a karate setting. Mm -hmm. um, we still follow the protocol, you know, uh, within the exercise period, we follow the SI regulations and all of that. But many of the parents are still uh, bringing their little ones back into the school. So this transition is happening presently as we speak. And what's the and what's the reaction at UC in you know the kids who like let's say they've been at home for maybe two years or yes. so and they maybe they don't have an outlet for their not only physical but also mental mm -hmm. um, you know wh whatever they may be going through. So what now that you're, now that people are coming back, what how do you what's the reaction like in them? How do you see them developing so far? Um, what I've seen is like isolation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now I have to engage them back into making a transition to interact with the other children. Mm -hmm. Because again, COVID, they were home, they were Alone. isolated. Mm -hmm. And now they have to start re engage back with their peers. Mm -hmm. So within the karate class, it's, it's a group setting, but it's not a large group setting. Mm -hmm. Because I, I do not want to bring a large group setting in yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but the setting that I have, i.e. 8 to 10 children, they're able to interact together mm -hmm. um, through... Uh, the exercises through the, the, the KI movement or the ISA movement and all of that, they're able to still engage. Now they see their peers in the school setting. Um, they sit down, they're talking to each other after school. Mm -hmm. They're starting to interact. They're starting to communicate. They're laughing. They're joking. The, that smile, that mm -hmm. interacting is going down and saying, ah, oh, that's awesome. Because before, during COVID, that was not happening. So um, before, well, Prior to, to, to COVID, um, what was the, the intake of the students like? Uh, how, how were the classes divided? How many students were taking your classes? Um, during that period, we had about from 12 to maybe about 18 students per class, wow. roughly. Um, the, the facility is large enough that we can host that much. And then what we did, we break them down into different age groups, different belts, if you allow me to say that. And with the rank, 
we had enough instructors to basically run simultaneous classes with beginners intermediate within one school setting or one so even though you may have a large number of little ones we were able to separate them and they were able to receive their instructions mm -hmm. and in terms of like the actual style of martial arts that you teach because there's several different styles correct um, and we saw in the demonstration a bit earlier we saw some weapons uh, mm -hmm. um, or so um, so what what are the or what what type or what are the types of, of, of martial arts that, that you instruct um, because I have knowledge of various martial arts, as you say, the principal martial art that I instruct in my foundation is Shotokan. Mm -hmm. It uh, evolved out of uh, Okinawa, mm -hmm. and i.e. subsequently went to Japan and then went worldwide. Mm -hmm. But Shotokan is one of your, dom I call it one of your dominant art that's out there. Along with Shotokan is Taekwondo. It's a, it's a, when you say martial art, you have a lot of, of different martial yeah. art under that umbrella. But Shotokan is one of them. I was reared in that uh, in the United States, and also I uh, trained in Taekwondo uh, back in the early 80s for the U.S. Olympic. Uh, back at that time, I was engaged in that very highly. I was highly competitive, um, world champion status, and on and on. I can go on, but the the weaponry part of it. Those uh, students in the blue uniform they're in the black belt club mm. that is a different club within our karate school and the black belt club is those students who say i want to become a black belt mm -hmm. goal setting or goal oriented right. so subsequently within the black belt club they learn the weapons they learn the various different techniques they they go out to the competition i i e back in prior uh, before covid back in the competition in Mexico and different parts throughout Mexico and compete in the karate world and win all the time. First place, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to say that. <laughs> um, so for our viewers out there, uh, if they would like to enroll their, their children in your karate school, what would they have to do? Um, first, I would like to meet them. Okay. It's not, you know, I receive phone call, uh, how much do you cost and all of that. Mm -hmm. I said, no, time out. Come on in and meet us. Come on in and see the facility. See the place. I'd like to see your face and see that smile. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, meet and greet and talk to you and see why do your child wants to learn karate? Mm -hmm. um, because one parent might come and say, you know what, my child have, um, they do not like to express themselves. They're very shy. Mm -hmm. Another parent might say, you know what, my child is hyperactive. They're all over the map and I can't control them at home. Mm -hmm. So I want to know where that child is at so I can format and then put that child within the class setting and work with them. Yeah. Um, so it would be make an appointment with you, you'd come in and we would talk and during that time I would also inform you um, the cost of the program and also the days of the program and the time period mm -hmm. of how long the program is going to cost. Okay. Um, so once a child enrolls and regardless if they don't want to be in the Black Belt Club or not, yes. Um, how do you encourage the, the, the stages? So, for, for example, I, I'm going to start at the beginner's level. Yes. Um, how, how do you motivate uh, somebody to continue on to the other levels? The, the motivation, believe it or not, is twofold. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just the instructor. But through the method of teaching, and I've been involved in teaching for 50 years plus, mm -hmm. through the strategies that I engage in, if I see an individual who is shy, who do not want so what I who don't want to engage themselves, then what I should do is use a strategy of encouragement, mm -hmm. positive reaffirmation. Mm -hmm. Maybe you cannot do that punch right, but not a hundred percent, but that was an awesome job you did. Mm -hmm. You know, you might not get that block up right, but keep on going. Mm -hmm. And those are the positive affirmation that I use in class to then allow that child to say, I cannot punch right, but maybe I can punch exactly right with the positive affirmation and with that child going home and do it. So I say to mom and dad, mom and dad, um, go home and show your mom what you learned. Mm -hmm. Because again, mom and dad is paying X amount of money. They want to see what their children is learning. Mm -hmm. So through positive affirmation, I use it as one of the strategy and also the exercise. And, and we've been mainly talking about children, but do you work with all age, age ranges? I work with age range from two years old. Uh, my oldest student is 60 plus. Okay. okay. 
So we could, so we could start, yeah. <laughs> Male and female. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you so much, uh, Sensei. Shihan. Shihan, Hi. for coming in. Um, so they can find you at the House of Shotokan. House of Shotokan. Um, we do not have a website, but mm -hmm. we're located right there on Coney Drive. Uh, you know where it's kind of congested every yeah. morning in that area there? Mm -hmm. right so they there. they can't miss it. <laughs> they can't, <laughs> can't miss it. It's right there. The phone number, uh, 621-9271. 621-9271. And you can call and, and make an appointment, come and visit with us. I would love to work with your children. We love, not just the children, adults Absolutely. too. All right. All right. Thank you so much for coming awesome. in. Thank and you. Um, that, we're going to take our other break. And when we get back, nutrition, hydration with uh, Cornelio Marfield. So stay tuned.